Hello church. Thank you for joining me today. We're in this series, This is the Life, and we're working through the entire book of 2 Corinthians. And I've entitled this, Never Give Up, Don't Give Up. Have you ever felt so discouraged that you wanted to quit, to give up? Life is hard, and all of us have moments when we'd like to throw in the towel. The Apostle Paul, who wrote 2 Corinthians, understood this. And in this chapter, chapter four, he says, we don't lose heart. He says it twice, once at the beginning of the chapter and then once again at the end. And we're gonna read the entire chapter. I'm gonna be pointing out four reasons why Paul didn't lose heart or give up, and neither should you. Second Corinthians chapter four, verses one through six. Therefore, since through God's mercy, we have this ministry, We do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. Look again at verse one. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Here's the first reason not to lose heart. We have this amazing ministry. God has chosen us, you and me, as his partners in redeeming the world. That's amazing. If you follow Jesus, you are a minister. Now the word means servant, and every Christian is God's servant and called to serve others. You are God's partner in his great work in the world. Now verse one looks back in chapter three, that's what the therefore means, which ends with the comparison of the old and new covenants, where Paul shows the surpassing glory or value of the new covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. As we behold him, we are being transformed into his image. Our lives become brighter and more beautiful as we become like Jesus. God uses us to spread the fragrance of Jesus everywhere. God has chosen us as his partner in redeeming the world. That's why Paul could say, therefore, since we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Sometimes we do get discouraged. Life is hard. There's bad news in our world every week. Besides the news happening all around us, there's what's happening in our personal lives. So many people are having a hard time. It's easy to get discouraged, to lose heart. We need to remember that by God's mercy, we are his partners in the most important work on the planet. God is using you to spread the aroma of Jesus everywhere. Our broken world needs Jesus. Our broken friends and family need Jesus. Now, the good news is that we have him and can share him with others. Are you feeling discouraged? Go help someone. Give your life away. Share God's love with someone today. You have an amazing ministry. Now, both Jesus and Paul indicated that there is a spiritual battle going on for our souls. Our adversary, the devil, wants to keep people blinded to the gospel and in bondage, a slave to sin. So what can we do about this? Well, there's three things. We could pray, love, and we could be. 
First, we're praying. We, we need to be prayer warriors. In Ephesians chapter 6, Paul talks about the spiritual warfare and it urges us to put on the full armor of God and above all, to pray. Now, what do we pray for? Well, we pray that God will give us a chance to share the good news. Second, we love. Love is doing what is best for others, no matter what it costs you, what it costs me. The best way to break through the blindness is to love them. Love them until they ask you why. Keep loving them just like Jesus loved you. And then third, be. Be a Christian. Be the fragrance of Jesus. Be a living letter from Jesus to them. Be someone who represents Jesus well. Be someone whose life makes them curious about the God that you love. We don't lose heart because we have this amazing ministry. We are partners with Jesus in changing the world one person at a time. And then second, we don't lose heart because we have a valuable treasure. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 12. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body, so that death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. I love this image in verse 7. We have this treasure in jars of clay. In Paul's day, many people stored valuables inside clay jars. So what's the treasure? The treasure is Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God in us. He himself lives in us. The treasure is also the gospel. And what are the jars of clay? Well, we are. Some of us may be crackpots, but we're, we're jars of clay. God has chosen to entrust the treasure of the gospel to frail, broken human beings. We look very ordinary on the outside, but contain a priceless treasure inside. We are ordinary people filled with an extraordinary God. Paul said in verse 5 that we don't preach ourselves, but Jesus as Lord, and we are just servants. I can't save anybody, change anyone, heal anyone. I'm just a clay pot. I can't do it, but I know who can, and I could point you to him. God loves to do extraordinary things through ordinary people. Our clay potness, if that is actually a word, it actually shows that the power is coming from somewhere else, from God, not us. We're clay pots with a treasure inside that treasure, the gospel, Romans 1.16. For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. The gospel is the power of God. The simple story of Jesus has power to save. The power is not us, but in the gospel, in the extraordinary God who lives in ordinary people like us. 2 Corinthians 4 verses 8 through 10. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. Life in the midst of death, victory in the midst of defeat, treasure in clay pots. So we don't lose heart. Third, we don't lose heart because we have a confident faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 through 15. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. 
Paul described some of the hardships he experienced because of his ministry. Hardships that would have caused many others to lose heart, give up, quit, throw on the towel. How did Paul keep going? He had a confident faith. He could proclaim the gospel fearlessly because he believed in a God who raised Jesus from the dead. That's a powerful God. He believed that God would also raise him from the dead. What's the worst someone could do to you? Kill you. If you believe God raises the dead, now well, being killed by someone, that's, that's not so bad. Hebrews 13, verse 6. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Notice one other thing in verse 15. All this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. What kept Paul going despite hardship and suffering? He not only trusted God, but knew that what he was doing would benefit many more people. More and more people were being reached by the grace of God. Don't lose heart. Have a confident faith that God is at work in you and through you. Fourth, we don't lose heart because we have an eternal perspective. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 through 18. Let's finish this chapter. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We don't lose heart because we have an eternal perspective. Verse 16, it says, Outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. Then Paul says an amazing thing in verse 17. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Notice how he describes our troubles. Light and momentary. But they don't always feel that way, do they? When, when you're in that, it's like, it's really heavy. But they really are. Our troubles are light and momentary. The old, uh, this too shall pass, right? Notice what, the, what, what these light and momentary uh, troubles accomplish. Well, they, they achieve for us a glory that is heavy and eternal. The word glory, it, it means brightness, radiance, splendor, greatness, honor. God is at work in your life, making you radiant and beautiful, a person of greatness and honor. Our troubles are light, but they are making us people of substance. Our troubles are momentary, but they are making us eternally glorious, giving us a lasting brightness and beauty. What a difference a perspective makes. In verse 18, Paul concludes by calling us to an eternal perspective. Verse 18, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We should fix our eyes on the unseen, not the seen. The unseen is eternal. The seen is temporary. We live in an eternal perspective. Perspective really is everything. To a worm, digging in hard ground is more relaxing than going fishing. You agree, right? Perspective changes how you look at things. If you're focused only on the seen, the temporary, you can lose heart. If you focus only on the news or on your current circumstances, you could lose heart. But if you fix your eyes on the unseen, the eternal, you see that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory. It all depends on what you focus on. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders 
and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus. He endured the light and temporary pain and shame of the cross because he saw the eternal glory that was to come. He had that eternal view. What are you facing? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Live with an eternal perspective. You do all of that and you won't lose heart.